Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to talk about the Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse, the ever-chosen, the destroyer of the old world, Archeon, and how you can use him in various different armies and where the different synergies lie. So Archeon is a very alluring model. He's one of the best sculpts in Age of Sigmar. I think we can say that pretty safely. He is the third most expensive uh, unit in Age of Sigmar. One of the most expensive single model kits in Age of Sigmar. And believe it or not, despite all of that, he can still be worth his points. So, we can actually use him in six different armies in Age of Sigmar. His home, Slaves to Darkness, Zinch, Korn, Slanesh, Nurgle, and the Legion of Chaos Ascendant. So I'm not really going to talk about Legion of Chaos Ascendant in particular. It's not really uh, a real like proper army, I don't think. And it's kind of like a weird hodgepodge of stuff thrown together. And it, Archeon only works sort of coincidentally that he has the demon keyword because of his mount. So we're going to stick to the other five armies that we're talking about here today. And with that, we should start to... So he has variable movement based on his damage table beginning at 14 inches. He's got a 3-up save, 10 bravery, and a whopping 20 wounds. He has four different melee attacks no ranged attacks his slayer of kings has four attacks on twos and threes rend two three damage the monstrous claws we got two attacks on twos and threes rend two d6 damage the lashing tails 2d6 attacks fours and threes no rend one damage and the three heads this is on the damage table as well beginning on six attacks <laughs> Threes and threes, rend one, two damage. So i done the math out on the side for our average damage that this guy's going to do. Um, this is actually the median damage, not necessarily the average damage. Um, just for uh, simplicity's sake. But we have, you know, in one round of attacks, without any buffs, this guy is doing 14 damage on average that is on normal day against a four plus save he's doing 14 damage it is outrageously powerful like really strong note on his damage table only his movement and one of his attacks get decreased by suffering wounds um and there's a spell in the slaves to darkness lore that lets you ignore that so Let's get on to his rules, and that part is mighty complicated. So, he can fly. That is our first simple one that is really strong with a 14-inch move. His armor lets him uh, negate mortal wounds on a 4+, plus and on a 6, the attacking unit suffers one mortal wound. Uh... Add 2 to the Bravery of Chaos units wholly within 12 inches of him and subtract 2 from the Bravery of enemy units while they're within 12 inches of him. Reroll hits of 6 for attacks uh, made by enemy units that target this model, so he is a little bit more durable just from a special ability. Uh, he is the Ever Chosen. Each time a spell uh, affects this model... Or an endless spell, you can roll a die on a 4+, plus. you ignore the effects of the spell or endless spell. Now, this one is interesting. The Slayer of Kings, his sword, he has four attacks there. If you get two unmodified wound rolls um, of six, the hero is slain that uh, he is attacking, if he's attacking a hero. So, you can spike Nagash with double sixes to wound all right and then we have our three-headed titan ability in your hero phase you pick one of the abilities from one of the heads of dorgar 
his mount. Um, from the first on a three plus, uh, an enemy unit within 12 inches uh, suffers D3 mortal wounds. The next one, he heals D3 wounds. And the last one, you can pick an endless spell within 18 inches and immediately dispel it without rolling dice. And Warlord without equal, this model on the battlefield gives you one extra command point in each hero phase. That's really strong. He's a wizard. He knows two spells, Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield. He can cast two spells a turn. Um, he doesn't have a signature spell on his scroll, uh, which is a, a, an interesting, weird downside. I'm not sure why that is the case. He does have two command abilities, though. Uh, first, you can use this command ability in your hero phase. You pick a friendly Slaves to Darkness unit on the battlefield. Until the end of that battle round, if a model from that unit is slain by attacks made with melee weapons, this model can fight before it's removed from play. And all-seeing Dominion, uh, basically you can spend a command point uh, at... Uh, I'm sorry, you can spend this command point... Uh, to roll a die before resolving effects of the command ability. And on a 2+, plus, the model can use the by my will command ability above without using a command point spent, even if it's not the hero phase and even if it's the command ability has already been used in the same turn. So, I apologize, I sort of tripped over that one a little bit. But basically, the second ability lets you use the first ability out of outside of the hero phase so it kind of like lets you um on a on a roll of two plus use it outside of the hero phase so you can select it later on if uh, a unit gets in trouble really i think about using these two on archeon himself um, if it's looking like he's going to go down in a particular combat, you want to probably use All-Seeing Dominion to try and at least get him to fight one last time on his way out. Um, so, yeah, it, there's a lot here. There's a lot of abilities. Extra damage, extra durability, a few sort of kickers, and, um, you know, some, uh, you know, a really strong command ability. All right, so Slaves to Darkness is the first allegiance that we're going to take a look at. Now, Archeon can take any of the Aura of Chaos abilities because he has all of the Godmark keywords, including Undivided. Um, the most notable one here is Corn, which will give him reroll once to hit and plus one to wound. So if you noted before, his whole... Uh, melee stat uh, range all wounds on threes so this moves everything to wound on twos um, and then re-rolling hits of one also very strong there's a couple of attacks that hit on twos so then hitting on twos re-rolling ones is really good as well for our spells out of the spell lore we have ruinous vigor that is of particular note it casts on a six and you can pick a monster and it ignores the wounds when you're looking up values on his damage table. So he's always going to be at maximum strength. Um, and out of the battalions, I think the most notable one here is the Plague Touched Warband, which uh, does mortal wounds back to the enemy for every six to wound that uh, they make in melee targeting Archeon. Or anything else in the battalion. So really strong. Kicks back a lot of mortal wounds. Particularly when you've got a guy that already has a 3 plus save. That is going to be able to then save a lot of those wounds. Uh, and then potentially heal stuff back. And there's all sorts of other synergies throughout other places. Where you can get even more durability. So overall really good. Let's see what else we got for Slaves to Dark.
So the host of the Ever Chosen, this is a host that is simply built around Archeon. It is all about running an army with Archeon as your general. There are no command traits or artifacts in this, assuming that you are going to be taking Archeon as your general. His aura of chaos extends to 18 inches for the general, which is really strong. Uh, that uh, buffs up a lot of your other units as well. All units on the board are immune to battle shock. And every turn you pick one enemy unit and reroll hit and wound rolls of one against them. Now, if we're using the aura of corn on Archeon, then you're going to be on uh, you know, hitting with reroll ones to hit and then hitting, oh, I'm sorry, wounding on twos with reroll ones to wound on all of your attacks. And then the Dark Prophecy ability uh, lets you predict the priority roll. And in general, we also have buffs to Varengard here as well with the eight circles, uh, as well as Varengard on their own getting uh, buffs from having Archeon on the table. So a lot going on here. This really just takes Archeon up to 11, very specifically and in a targeted way, taking Archeon specifically up to 11. Lots of really cool stuff there. Now, other synergies that we get from units. Uh, the Chaos Lord has a command trait that lets a unit uh, pile in an attack a second time in combat. That is incredibly useful. Chaos Sorcerer Lord, uh, Oracular Visions can uh, reroll all saves, and then his spell rerolls all hits and wounds. Uh, the Chaos War Shrine, uh, pick one, any one, you get the maximum use out of the Chaos War Shrine. You can reroll hits, wounds, plus one to save, plus one to wound, I believe. Um, reroll charges, all kinds of stuff. And all of these are also available in the God-Marked armies, so you can port these over. And all of the God-Marked units that we're going to be talking about that are at home in their individual armies can also be allied into Slaves to Darkness for their synergies in there. So if you're looking to optimize Archeon, uh, that is one possible way to do it. So, looking at the God-Marked armies, Blades of Corn. Blood Tithe is an interesting one because we have uh, some ups and downs here with Blood Tithe. Blood Tithe really wants you to run a multiple small unit army. And Archeon is one model that is 800 points that you plan on not ever dying. So your Blood Tithe is really going to all be hinging on the fact that Archeon is going to do all the damage and destroy units and uh, rack up that blood tithe for you. The upside here with blood tithe is one of the blood tithe abilities lets you uh, fight in the hero phase with one of your units and getting an extra round of combat in with Archeon when he's already stuck into combat somewhere is incredibly powerful. Um, his Blood Blessings of Corn. Um, these are the prayers from your Slaughter Priests. Um, you can get one that is plus one to hit and one that is plus one to save. Both of those incredibly valuable buffing up Archeon. You can very easily, between Blood Blessings and Command Points, get them in, on a two-up rerollable save. Uh, the Reapers of Vengeance uh, host... That gives you a command ability that allows for double pile-ins. So again, getting another extra set of combat in there with uh, Archeon. The Blood Secrator and Aspiring Deathbringer both have auras of plus one attack. The Aspiring Deathbringer is a command ability, and the Blood Secrator is just an aura, and that is very strong. He's a staple in most corn armies. And then finally, the Blood Stoker adds three inches to a unit's run and charge. So that is also really good. Getting uh, Archeon across the field much more reliably. 
Disciples of Zinch. This is an excellent choice if you are looking at what to do with Archeon. Um, your destiny dice that you get with Zinch, that is the nine dice that you roll at the start of the game and set them aside, um, you can use those to fix your Slayer of Kings rolls so that um, you get the double sixes when you need them to uh, slay those big enemy models. Uh, the, there is a spell called Infusion Arcanum, casts on a five, plus one to hit and wound. That is also really strong. Uh, you can give that to Archeon and he can buff himself up. Uh, the Host Arcanum gives you a six inch pregame move on all of your flying units. So couple that with Archeon's already 14 inch move and he moves 20 inches in the first turn and then he uh, only has like a, you know, probably a four inch charge to get off to get into the enemy lines on the first turn. And our last one here is Kairos Fate Weaver. Um, he is also a fixer for your Slayer of Kings rolls. He has, you know, a similar ability to the Destiny dice. And I'm going to also mention here, this is not a comprehensive list of all of the synergies. There's also ways in Zinch to get more Destiny Dice, which just go feed back into the power of using Destiny Dice to fix your Slayer of Kings rolls or to fix your rolls for, um, you know, the number of attacks with the tails or, you know, your damage with the claws. It, there's a bunch of different things that you can do here. Um, but in general... Uh, this is what we're looking at. The, the big advantages that you have here with Zinch is really getting the most out of the Slayer of Kings uh, and getting that six-inch pregame move to get him right up there for free. Hedonites of Slanesh. So Archeon is just like the guy you want in a Hedonites of Slanesh army. Um, it... The abilities of this army really revolve around having combat heroes, and that is exactly what he is. So he just produces tons of depravity for you, which then you can in turn turn into more Keepers of Secrets and other uh, uh, other demon baddies to send after your opponent. Uh, Locus of Diversion is uh, something that he can give out as well. His is on a 5+, plus because he's not a greater demon. Um, but that can make enemy units fight last, so he can make sure he gets his attacks in. Uh, the Euphoric Killer's ability lets you uh, get double hits on hits of 6. Um, the Lurid Haze Invaders ha has a command ability that adds plus 1 to save. That is really powerful. Um, and then the Keeper of Cigarettes has a double pile-in command ability. And it should also be noted here that Slanesh also has um, a lot of abilities to get more command points. So that you know, these abilities that are going to take some command points to get done, you can really rest assured that you'll have them on top of Archeon already giving you to a turn. And finally, Maggotkin of Nurgle. So there's a couple of good options on the cycle of corruption. Uh, plus one to wound is, as we've talked about before, particularly strong. Uh, there's also a spot that gives you plus two movement. The Feculent Gnarlmaw lets him run in charge. And for an extra command point, then you can char change that to a run of six and then charge. So, once again, another way to get across the board 20 inches in your first turn. Uh, the Munificent Wanderers, he is a demon, so he reduces all rend uh, by melee attacks on him by one. And the Command Trait reflects back mortal wounds on hits of six against your demons while they're within 12 inches of your general, which is not terribly hard to do. Uh, the Great Unclean one also gives you plus three movement and a command ability for plus one attack. He also is a wizard and can get plus one to his casting, which can let you move the cycle of corruption to the spot that you want. 
And finally, the Harbinger of Decay gives us a five up ward save within seven inches of him. And that has a seven inch movement. So we can combine things there, run him up, you know, get near the Feculent Gnarl Maw with Archeon, run in charge. And then, you know, with your various other movement buffs, you can have your Harbinger of Decay close enough to Archeon to still give him that five up ward save really strong overall he's got a lot of different options here i know i kind of ran through some of this stuff really quickly without necessarily going in depth and explaining what all of these things do um just sort of giving you the general overview but i really wanted to hit the high points on what archeon is capable of and what sort of buffs he can get in various different armies so i think that basically covers uh the majority of what we're looking at with archeon and as I mentioned, it's not really a comprehensive list. It is really just kind of hitting the high points. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If so, hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. And always remember to come join us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you care to support the channel further, we do have a Patreon link in the description down below. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you all later.